All right, hello everyone, Adrenaluke here, and I'm really excited for this one. I'm going to be ranking all 22 tracks in ACC from worst to best. Keep in mind these are my personal opinions, and obviously not everyone's preferences will match mine. I'm going to separate them into tiers as well, with F tier, horrible, D tier, bad, C tier, okay, B tier, good, A tier, great, and S tier, amazing. I'm going to be judging them purely on how enjoyable they are to drive at and the quality of the racing at each circuit. Anything regarding legacy or historical value will not be considered for the ranking of each circuit. So with that out of the way, let's jump straight into it with the worst circuit in all of ACC. You can probably guess what it is as the video is rolling it right now. In 22nd place, easily the worst circuit in the game is Spa Franker Champs. Look, I really want to like this track. As much as I try to lie to myself and say that I like it, I just can't get past how horrible the flow is here, and the racing here is always stale. T to anyone that likes this track, there's only one thing that I would say to you. Look at the date this video is posted. I definitely just lost at least 50 subscribers for that one. <laughs> Let's get into the actual worst circuit in ACC. I'm going to have to go with Snetterton. In all seriousness, I do think the flow here is horrible. It's always felt like a chore to drive here. Now, to be fair, the racing here has lots of opportunities to overtake. However, it's so unpleasant to drive here that I can't place it anywhere else in this list. But can we just take a moment to talk about how you can quite literally run over the braking markers at every single turn no really try it out for yourself if you don't believe me there is not a single turn that doesn't have markers that can be ran over as if it having the worst flow of any circuit in the game wasn't bad enough already I'll tell you what guys if you have a friend who wants to try ACC and he wants to buy ACC and get online and you don't like this guy, so you don't want him coming online on the servers, here's what you do. You invite him over and say, hey man, you were wanting to try ACC? And he's like, yeah. So you invite him over, you say, yeah, I'll let you try it out before you buy it so you can see what you think. Invite him over to try it, and while he's on his way, open up Snatterton for the track that he tries the game on, and then run over every single marker on the side of the track so then when he arrives, he'll have a horrible experience, and then mission accomplished. That friend that you don't like will never buy this game or touch it. That's how bad this track is, especially if you run over all the braking markers. Snetterton belongs in F tier. In 21st place, I have Monza. This seems to be a fan favorite. I can already imagine the comment section will be rioting for this one. But hear me out. I have my reasons for placing Monza so far down on the list. How many times have you made it through turn one here on the first lap without getting murdered? Pile-ups are almost inevitable at Monza, and there are two chicanes, and I don't like chicanes. Other than that, it's mostly driving in a straight line, which I believe there are four straights in this one track. Uh, the inverted curb at Ascardi can sometimes catch your right wheel and spit you out. The racing is dependent on both slipstream and avoiding carnage, aka it's mostly luck. I'm personally not a fan. Whenever I see Monza on a calendar in a league, I don't get excited at all. Monza, for me, is going in D tier. In 20th place is Zandvoort. The driving experience is wonderful. Qualifying or even practice is always great fun. But here's the problem. The layout sure is fun to drive on, but in my opinion, the racing is a different story. Overtaking opportunities tend to be slim, which makes the racing dull and not nearly as exciting enough. It's fun to drive, but boring to race. Zandvoort lands in D tier for me. 19th place is going to Ungaring, if that's how you pronounce it. Similar to Zandvoort, this also has limited overtaking opportunities. However, I do find the racing to be a bit more exciting here than at Zandvoort. The racing still isn't as exciting as it can be in other tracks. The track limits here can be a bit of an issue at the exits of turn 4 and turn 11. I do find the racing here to be a bit better than Zandvoort though, but I still am putting it in D tier. 
Now moving on to C tier, and we're kicking it off with Paul Ricard in 18th place. A part of me enjoys this track, and a part of me dislikes it. Unlike the previous few tracks mentioned, this one has ample opportunities to make a move and send it. Some parts of this circuit have awkward flow for my taste, and the curbs are so high that you have to raise your ride height to accommodate, since you need to go over the curbs here to be fast enough. This makes a car have more body roll. Yuck. The back straight seems to last for an eternity, so Slipstream also plays a big role, once again a luck factor. I also do think this has the worst pit exit in the game. Exiting pit lane sends you right to the heavy braking zone of the front straight. Whose idea was that? I wouldn't say this is a bad circuit, but I wouldn't say it's good either. Paul Ricard to me is just okay, so it goes in C tier. Another track I consider is not bad, but also not good, would be Olton Park. I'm going to be honest, this track has really grown on me. I never hated it, but if I made this list a few months ago, it would not have placed in 17th. Easily the most bumpy ride, your suspension wants to file a restraining order against you after a single lap. I find the BMW M2 TCX to be the best suited here, although it's also not that bad in GT4 either. Decent overtaking, although some corners are near impossible to go side by side, I learned this the hard way. This track is brutal, it takes no prisoners, is punishing and unforgiving, but it can be fun. I would prefer a track not as bumpy and rough, but it has grown on me. Hasn't grown on me enough to consider it good, but it's okay. The last track to go in C tier, in 16th place we have Mizano. When you start a new video game and you leave your character on all the default settings, this track is for you. This is the world's most average racetrack. It's the Ford Fusion, the Toyota Corolla, it's everyday life. Standard issue. Mizano is the guy that works a typical 9 to 5 office job, and when he's not at work, he's wearing a plain white t-shirt and jeans. Nothing wrong with it, but it's as run of the mill as it gets. I can't think of any flaws but it's not unique enough to be placed any higher. It's just a standard racetrack, not bad at all, but just barely missing B tier for me. In 15th place, I'm going to have to go with Circuit of the Americas. This was a tricky one. I had to think for a while before I could make a final decision on where I was going to place it on the list. Let me start by saying I love the actual layout. When you nail laps here, it feels satisfying. I've had some amazing battles here, but a good chunk of the racing involves dive bombing, as the nature of this circuit invites overly aggressive lunging, which takes place in far too many races here. The pit entry is a bit awkward. On top of that, the track limits tends to make every race a penalty festival for everyone. That seems to be the most common complaint. And I can confidently say the track limits here are worse than any other circuit, so it's a valid complaint. But can we talk about how this track is littered with anti-cuts? There's some here, 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 and here, and here, no, oh, and also there, and there. And here, and it goes on. I think you get the point. These can be quite literally race ending if you hit them just right. If it weren't for anti-cuts being at nearly every corner on both the apex and exit, and if the anti-cuts weren't as tall as Shaquille O'Neal, I'd probably have put Coda in A tier. Nighttime scenery is pretty cool with the concert and laser light show, as well as the changing colors of the observation tower. Overall, this has grown on me as I used to heavily dislike this circuit. A couple months ago, I'd even put it all the way down in F tier. But these days, I consider it good. So it's going in B tier. 14th place brings us to Brands Hatch. If you want to feel a rush, this one is for you. There are no chicanes or anti-cuts, and the paddock hill bend is exhilarating with its steep drop. What is there not to love? Well... A few things. Some of the braking markers can get destroyed. There is no runoff, so you push a tad bit too hard and you're into the grass. Some people love it for the extra challenge, and some hate it. You combine that with the fact it has barely any straight line driving, 
and what results is an exhausting test of maximum focus and concentration. Brands Hatch demands precision and energy. It isn't for everyone. As for me, I think it's a good track, but not great. Missing out on A tier, but it's definitely still good. So, B tier it is. Landing in the 13th spot, I went with Zolder. Racing here can be very close together. I can't help but giggle most of the time given how fun it can be. Rapid directional changes at turns 7 and 8 calls for quick thinking, which then leads into a 90 degree right hander at turn 9, which both the outside or inside line can come out on top of in wheel to wheel battles. The chicane does have a nasty curb, but that's really the only flaw I can think of. I consider this a good track overall. Zolder goes to B tier. Everything I mentioned about Zolder, Imola does it better. Enter Zolder 2.0, and the 12th place spot, Imola takes that rapid directional changes to a whole new level. In fact, all of Sector 1 will have you zigzagging so much you think you're on a scrambler ride. Tuning your car to stiffen it up and lower the ride height can help minimize weight transfer, which really helps in this zigzag nature of Sector 1. But that leads us into something I don't like, the chicane. When I mean this is Zolder, but amplified, it also takes Zolder's one flaw, the chicane, and amplifies that. In this track, the chicane is even worse than Zolder. The curbs at Emilis Chicane are so big you could land a helicopter on them. The racing here is fast paced, but dive bombs aren't uncommon. If it weren't for those huge curbs at the chicane, Emila would easily be an A tier for me, but I can't look past that flaw. And with that, it falls down to B tier. A fan favorite, Suzuka takes 11th. What is the first thing you think of when someone mentions this track? The S curves, arguably the best S's in all of motorsport. Spoon curve being another unique complex of corners. And what about the fast paced 130R which we all know and love? There is lots to enjoy here, but it does have its flaws. Track limits tend to be annoying at the exit of turn 9, and Degner curve can spell chaos sometimes. The entry to the chicane can invite dive bombs, but I have to admit the chicane itself is tolerable, minus the curves that can unsettle the car despite them being small curves. Overall though, it's a good circuit, and I love the nighttime scenery here with the ferris wheel lit up. The last track being added to the crowded B tier, Barcelona. Oh, stop booing. Look, I don't understand why Barcelona is hated by so many. In my opinion, it's got great flow, and it's decent fun to drive, but it makes for some good racing. There is nothing too extraordinary about Barcelona, but I can't think of any flaws. The pit lane entry and exit are both fine. The chicane is one of the few chicanes that I can tolerate. In fact, you can follow an opponent closely through it. Keep in mind, the only other track so far that has zero flaws in my book has been Mizano. Although, I enjoy the layout of Barcelona much more than Mizano, as it has a little bit of everything, where Mizano is mostly a high-speed layout. With no flaws and an overall balanced track layout, the only reason Barcelona is in B tier is because all the tracks in A and S tier I find to be more exciting. But since there is nothing I dislike about it, Barcelona sits comfortably at the top of B tier. Deal with it, Barcelona haters. <laughs> Moving on to A tier, we have Laguna Seca in ninth place. What an absolute blast. Fun to drive and fun to race. Boasting the corkscrew, arguably the best downhill section in the game besides probably Mount Panorama, which we'll get to later. Pretty unique. I like how different it feels in both the drive and the atmosphere given that it's surrounded by sand. Even just setting lap times alone is thrilling, but the racing turns it up a notch. Sector 3 flows the best, but the rest of the track I'd say has great flow too. There are some race curbs here that will launch you to the moon if you touch them, such as turn 4 and turn 6 before the Rahal straight. With great flow and the thrill of going down the corkscrew, it would be a crime putting this circuit below A tier. If you like Brands Hatch, then you would love Donington Park. Taking the 8th place spot, 
Donington feels like Brands Hatch on steroids. Much like Brands Hatch, there is no runoff, just grass, and not much time to relax. This track is exhausting, but so, so rewarding. It's exhilarating to drive, and I've never had a dull race here. You have the sweeping curves going slightly downhill through Sector 1, followed by technical corners that can give you a good run on any opponents caught slacking. Then on to possibly the best chicane in the whole game, all topped off with two back-to-back -back hairpins at the end of the lap. Those final few turns create epic side-by-side -side battles, with the first one being a right-hander and the last one being a downhill left-hander, which is probably the most unique hairpin in the game. Whoever takes the outside line at the first hairpin now has the inside line at the next one, and vice versa. It's cool how planes can fly over every now and then too. The only flaw is the pit exit throws cars right onto the racing line in a similar fashion as Paul Ricard, just not as bad. I absolutely love this circuit. It rightfully deserves A tier. Doesn't get enough love. It's underrated. Much like Donington, another highly underrated circuit is Kyalami. Taking the seventh place spot, the layout here is fast paced, yet easier on the tires than say Silverstone for instance. Much like Laguna Seca, it is both fun to drive and fun to race. Although I'd say this track has more overtaking opportunities than Laguna Seca does. The nighttime scenery here is another good one especially seeing the city lights off in the distance before descending down mineshaft. The one flaw of Kyalami is the anti-cut at Cheetah. This curb is vicious and can be race ending, although there is only one anti-cut here, unlike Coda. One of the most underrated tracks, Kyalami certainly belongs in A tier. In sixth place we have none other than the Nurburgring. It's hard to find anyone that dislikes this track. It's a popular one, and for good reason too. Lapping this course by yourself is okay and all good fun, but there is something about racing at Nürburgring that guarantees you'll be on the edge of your seat. Every time I race here, the hair on the back of my neck stands up as chills go through my spine in anticipation of what's going to happen next. I'd go as far as to say, if you were only judging these tracks by the quality of the racing alone, Nürburgring would be in the top three. The racing here is phenomenal, just missing out from S tier, but I definitely consider it a great track. No circuit can make you feel more alive than scaling the mountain at Bathurst. In fifth place, Mount Panorama is without a doubt the absolute best driving experience in all of ACC. You thought no runoff at Brands Hatch was a challenge because there's grass at the edge? Ha! Try solid walls surrounding you as you climb up this steep mountain to then downhill braking all while you're forced to either be brave and hug those walls as close as you can or fall behind because you don't have the courage to push the limits. This is definitely the most punishing yet most thrilling track to drive. But let's talk about the quality of the racing. The narrow width makes it a little too easy to defend, and even on the back straight, if someone stays in the middle, it's near impossible to go around them. If a spin or a wreck leaves a car sideways, it can almost block the entire width of this narrow track surface, and given it's surrounded by physical barriers hugging it, you can't just drive off the track to go around wrecked cars. Traffic jams are a possibility here. Easily the best track to lap by yourself, but the racing needs more overtaking opportunities to be placed higher on the list compared to the top four. I consider this track amazing, so it has to go in S tier. Another fan favorite, fourth place takes us over to New York with the ever so popular Watkins Glen. Much like Nürburgring, the racing here is incredible every time. This circuit is all about fast sweeping corners with great flow through the whole lap. You do have to be careful though at the bus stop chicane, as that's where the most wrecks do occur with people being too ambitious. Not much to say other than such an amazing track. Easily an S tier, not a hard decision. Starting off the top three with Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Okay, listen, listen, I may be a little biased, 
as I do live 30 minutes from this track and I've attended seven races in person here and I plan on going to more. But I tried to leave bias aside and I really wanted to make a fair judgment on where Andy should place and I have to say I think it's legitimately underrated by so many. Most people don't give it a fair chance but when they do they're shocked and amazed which leads me to say I told you so. If you looked at the post-race chat in a league after a race here and you saw how much everyone was praising the race, you'd think we were talking about a race that just happened at Watkins Glen or Spa. I was watching a stream once where the streamer was preparing to start an LFM race in Indy and someone in the chat kept saying he hates this track and it's lame. I told him the racing here is amazing and he dismissed it at first but during the race he changed his mind real quick in the chat and I was like see what I mean about the racing here? Look guys, the thing is the nature of this road course makes it so any two cars that are battling both get slowed down so much that more cars get to catch up. It's almost guaranteed you'll find yourself in three, four, five way battles here at Indy. Turn one can see either the car on the inside or outside line come out on top in door to door battles. The final turn is one where you need full throttle to stay on pace but side to side there means that they're not going to both be on full throttle and they have to lift which also allows more traffic to catch up to battles and add to it. Heck, the whole entire layout makes for mental chess battling here. I genuinely think the racing here is unmatched by any other circuit. You may shrug it off and say, oh, this guy is just biased because it's his home track, but give it a chance and you will see exactly what I mean. It is technical with a steep learning curve, the pit lane takes forever, and sure, there are tracks that are way more fun to drive at, but the racing here is so mind-blowing that I think it's a fair call for me to put it in third place. Indy is amazing. I don't care what you say. S tier all day. In second place, we have probably the most popular circuit in the game, Spa Franker Champs. Do I really have to explain why this is in the top three? Anyone who has driven here knows it has amazing flow. It's endless fun even just to drive by yourself, but the racing is top notch as well. I only have two complaints, which is that you could watch this whole video in a shorter time than how long it takes to get through the pit lane here. It's even longer than the pit lane at Indy. Also, it's overused in public lobbies. It seems pretty much 98% of the public lobbies are always spa. But I definitely see why it gets so much love, and I don't disagree at all. Spa is amazing. Easy S tier for me. And here we are with my favorite track in all of ACC. Ladies and gentlemen, Silverstone. The layout here is absolutely incredible to drive on. It's technical, yet simple in a perfect way. It's got everything you need in a racetrack. Fast long straights, you got it. A chicane where you can actually go side by side through, you got it. Fast sweeping flow, you got it. A turn one that doesn't always result in carnage, you got it. A wide surface for lots of overtaking opportunities, you got it. A couple sharp turns thrown in the mix without interrupting the flow too much, you got it. I love Silverstone. It is my number one favorite. And with that, now you know where I rank every track in ACC. What are your top three favorite tracks? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe as there is much more content on the way. Race fast, race clean, and I will see you all in the next video.